Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is December 8th, 2020, and we're doing a drop in math tutoring session number 65. Let's do a little mathematics, open discussion. So almost anything goes except politics. And uh, if there's math, math supersedes everything else, right? So we'll do mathematics and there's, we can do a little bit of physics and stuff as well. And we've done a few of these before. And uh, the routine is basically, you know, we do a little salutations and whatnot. And slowly as people come in, if they have questions, math questions, uh, we try to deal with them. Hopefully we can help out. If I can't help out, there's sometimes, a lot of the times there's people in the chat that their math is a little bit more powerful than mine. So they are always uh, willing to lend a hand. And um, aside from that, while we wait for notifications to go out on Discord and uh, Twitch to let you know what this is all about, I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to support this work, if you want to follow this work, if you want to know what this work is about, which is all layered on mathematics, whoop, over here, uh, Patreon is a great place uh, to follow the work and to support this work. I don't put anything in my own paywalls. Everything's creative commons. Share, share, like. And if you do follow the work for a while, and if you do think that this work uh, deserves your support, again, Patreon is a fantastic way to make sure that we continue to do what it is that we are doing. We are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Chicho Live, C H Y C H O L I V E. If you want to participate in the chat, and the chat's going to pop up here as people start rolling in, Twitch is where you want to be at. And for those of you who've been supporting this work on uh, Twitch, uh, liking, following, sharing, commenting, dropping in with your math questions and whatnot, and other live streams that we've been doing, thank you very much for your support. And as always, mods, thank you for taking care of business and being here. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Parlor. Hello, Minds, VK, Gab, and Twitter, part of our decentralization. And we do share additional content on those platforms as well, including our Discord page. Twitch sent out, awesome elder god, how are you doing? And anytime you want, you can come to our chat, come to our Twitch page. And in the chat, if you type in exclamation mark social, all the links will be there, including our Discord page link, which is sort of here. We've got 650 plus people, I guess, now on Discord, and it's continuing to grow. So it's turned out to be a fantastic forum where people, we have a whole bunch of different folders that people talk about different things. Some are more active than others. Some people only participate in certain folders and whatnot. And I personally and a few other people I know, we scan everything which is fantastic. Slick Mick, how are you doing? Oh boy, have I got some math for you. Is differentiation appropriate for these streams or not? Uh, we can do, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, polynomial. Uh, I don't know my uh, taking derivatives rules of all the other ones and whatnot. I haven't, I haven't explored that far down or refreshed myself that far down yet. Uh, but the concept of uh, calculus, just uh, introductory calculus, really taking the derivative, what it means and stuff like that, Slickmic, uh, we can do. I've refreshed myself to a level where I'm comfortable talking about it and uh, explaining what the derivative is, what the slope is, setting it equal to zero, finding the inflection points and blah, 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 blah. And it's fantastic. Super fun. Nikki, Hickey, how are you doing? Hola, hola. Hope you're doing well three more on discord and it's 666 oof maybe we should freeze it there <laughs> no one else allowed until someone drops out <laughs> oh and how are you doing hey chicho hey chat what a good stream to catch awesome yeah math streams i love these streams man really it's just just exploration right and challenging yourself and keeps me on my toes because uh, a whole bunch of different types of questions that come my way some stuff I don't know and I end up learning a lot through these live streams right and it makes me feel good making myself available for at least at least four hours a month to at least two sessions a month so far this is our second session this month and we'll probably do another one this month oh, actually it's holidays so 
people not, might not be up for doing mathematics. I am always. So maybe we'll do uh, some math uh, during the holidays as well. But we're doing anywhere between two to four math sessions a month, which is phenomenal. I think it's awesome. Right. Uh, and as I've said before, the more people speak the language of mathematics, the better our society will be. Right. Uh, so I hope uh, more people become literate in the language of mathematics. Slickmic. I'll save it for next stream because I've got loads of polynomials for you too. <laughs> Hilarious, like, like polynomials. Polynomials are fun, really. Who doesn't like smooth functions without any breaks and points and asymptotes, all right? Polynomials is just like a roller coaster. You're going for a nice ride, woo, up and down, woo, right? Sometimes just straight up, sometimes straight down. Sometimes you're just on a flat surface. Sometimes you're at a point right for live streams where we don't have any visuals which we do today when we're just doing open discussions we do upload those streams the audio of it to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho as podcast and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes so you can follow the work there and this is mathematics we're going to be uploading this both to bitshoot and youtube and if you want to support this work on those platforms you can subscribe you can like you can share you can comment you can definitely turn on notifications on bitshoot you're guaranteed to get them on youtube i don't know uh, i don't get i rarely get notifications from youtube from the channels i've subscribed to on youtube anymore right the ones i'm subscribed to on bitshoot i get notifications on there and i'm watching more content on bitshoot now than i am on youtube um, mainly because I watch a lot of political stuff uh, the lecture stuff they're still abundant on YouTube I hope that the lecture stuff will become more abundant on BitChute and other sites as well and if you're on YouTube uh, another way you can support this work is you can join the channel membership and there's a button there and for those of you who so join YouTube membership thank you very much for your support Oh, and off topic, I've got crazy amounts of uni deadlines lately, but I'm getting through the Assange video slowly but surely. The more education, the better. Now bring on the math. Awesome. The, the Assange videos are fantastic, are they not? The interviews and the discussions and the, the, the perspective that they give you regarding our society. And keep in mind, those videos were from like 10 years ago, right? If not, well, 10 years, let's say plus and minus minus i believe right so 10 years ago right well plus and minus 10 years ago and those discussions that in those 12 videos that they had between the different people that came on to julian assange's um, show are ridiculously relevant to our societies right now right nikki hickey easy question hopefully what counts as calculus calculus is the introduction of time into mathematics let me take these guys down right so oops let me take boing 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 so nikki take a look at this let's do yeah let's do blue today no no let's do brown today i got different color pens so let's assume we got the following function right so here's a following function Here's the following polynomial function, right? You got your x, you got your y, which we'll call f of x, right? Us graphing this thing, us finding the x-intercept, the y-intercept, finding out what degree it is and all that jazz is pre-calculus, they call it. For me, for me, really, the distinction is very moot, to say the least, right? But calculus is the introduction of time into this equation so basically what happens is let's assume your x is your time you're looking at this function and asking yourself what happens to you if you're let's say riding on this function what happens to this function as you move along this function right that's calculus and once you start asking yourself that certain features regarding this function pop up right one of the first ones is the slope at a given point right so for example 
you're this guy, you've come along here and you're riding this wave. You can ask yourself, what's the slope? What's the gradient of this function at a given point, right? So if this is regarding speed, let's assume this was time and this was speed, right? Then what's the slope here? What's the slope here, right? And over here at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point, what you find out is if you take the derivative, if you try to find the slope at this point, this point, this point, and this point, you're going to find out the slope is zero. And what that allows you to do, if you remember, the power of zero is this. Like there's problems with zero and there's... Um, a power of zero that really allows us to do the mathematics or take mathematics to the level that we are right now, right? The power of zero is this. A times B times C times D is equal to zero. I've mentioned this a gazillion times. You guys probably already know this, but I always do this, okay? How do you multiply four things, four, two or more things to give you zero? At least one of them has to be zero, right? So you can set, as soon as you get this, you get you can set A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, C is equal to zero, and D is equal to zero. You can't do this with any other number. Power of zero, right? Now keep this in mind, right? That's just straight up mathematics. Keep this in mind, that's the power of zero. Now take a look at this thing. If this is a function, f of x, and it is the way I've drawn it, right? If you take the derivative of this function, which is, you define it as this, right? f prime of x is the derivative of this function, okay? Now, this function right now, the way I've drawn it is degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is, here, let me write this here. Well, let's assume that's f of x. Here, let me write it here. f of x is this. Let's assume this is f of x is equal to, I don't know. 2x to the power of 5 plus 4x cubed plus 2x and let's assume this is negative 1 minus 1 so your y-intercept is negative 1 right so let's assume that's the equation of this function right we, I, I don't think it is but let's assume that's what it is right then if you take the derivative of this function you would get the derivative equal to 10x to the power of 4 plus 12x squared plus 2. Okay, that would be the derivative of this function. And if this is factorable, and it would be because that's really just a quadratic, right? If this is factorable, that means you can break this up into things, multiply it together to give you 0, and it would be 4 of them, right? Let's assume there will be 4 of them, okay? Then what you can do, you can apply this to it. So you could say each one of these can be zero. This could be zero, this could be zero, this could be zero, and this could be zero. And what is that going to give you? That, if you solve for that, is going to give you these points, the x part of these points, right? And there's four of them, right? And then what you can do, as soon as you get the x value of it, whatever the x value is, it's a number, you can take this number, plop it back down into the original function, boop, and find f of this number, and it will give you the y value. And what's the y value? The y value is this point. So now you know exactly where the bumps occur, when the up occurs, when the down occurs, boop. You know exactly where those points are. That is considered to be calculus because you're analyzing this function. You're taking the derivative, looking at the slope. And the slope of anything, slope, oops, slope, slope of a function is equal to rate of change. And what is the one absolute we have in life? The one absolute in life is change.
right? It's not death and taxes. Death and taxes are change, right? Novelty. Our world looks for novelty. Novelty is introduced introduction of something new, and it's the change, right? So change, the rate of change is really the you can think about it as the beginning of calculus. And again, for me, I don't draw that boundary. To me, it's all mathematics, right? It's just something else you can do. Okay. And free Assange, free Assange, free Assange, right? That's our all bot reminding us. Here's the mic, by the way, right? Slick as math wizard. The graph of the cubic function cuts the x axis and x is equal to negative 3 uh, and x is equal to 2 and y is equal to verifiable of x <laughs> is that what this one is no this one what uh, is that a question we want to do we want to do that question we could do it sure and anuj how are you doing welcome to another live stream should i erase this i hope that's clear let's see what slick mix says the graph of a cubic function cuts the x-axis at taring taring and y is equal to this verify oh so we want to do this let's do it sure let me erase this okay let's do a question a slick mix set for us uh nikki i hope that's clear is that okay yeah that's a good i read it properly without trying to do multiple things at the same time uh nikki i should have before erasing this i should have asked you is, is that clear sort of where they make the distinction All right if you have any questions about it uh, let us know i'm going to write down this question actually the graph of a cubic function so cubic function cubic function uh, cuts the x-axis has x-intercepts has x ints equal to negative three and two negative three and two uh, and y at and y intercept and y int is equal to six or negative six negative six and y intercept is equal to negative six verify that f of x verify f of x is equal to i like small case f i'm gonna make my f prettier f of x verify that f of x is x cubed plus 2x squared x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 minus 5x minus 6. Right? that's the question the stock market is much much simpler the stock market is much much simpler it's not actually you can you the stock market is on the base level it's really simple right really it's ridiculously simple our minds we're human beings that are wired to find do pattern recognition but if you want to verify those patterns you got to run the calculus you got to look at the calculus right the rate of change right so you can run the mathematics and different models to make predictions and hopefully place the right bet right so mathematics allows you to game the system really so take a look at this thing now you don't even need this this part they could give you this and say cubic function has x intercepts of negative three and two and a y intercept of negative six find the function right but in this case they're saying verify that this is the function but you don't need that they could just say find the function okay i have no clue how to do this one so i'm sorry if you if you this turns uh into a much more no it's not really it's not a complex uh well it's grade 11 grade 12 question odd oh, man how you doing I'm like, oh hey chicho i'm amazed i've seen three streams in a row nice odd man. you just missed my little uh hokey pokey introduction to what calculus is you could have corrected me on some mistakes I did. Oh yeah, stock market math is super hard. Yeah, it could be super hard, right? On the base, ridiculously easy. We're hardwired to look for patterns. If you wanna um, profit from it on a guaranteed basis, 
almost guaranteed basis or give you an advantage, you can run the mathematics, run the calculus through it, and that gives you a huge advantage over anybody else. Okay, super nostalgic seeing uh, you for uh, of calculus though. Super nostalgic seeing you for calculus though. Seeing you, seeing of calculus. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Look, we got a function. It's a cubic function, right? So there's a couple of ways you can think about it. So let's think about it this way. If it's a cubic function, then you're going to have f of x is equal to a x. We can call this b x and whatnot, but they've already given it to us, right? So let me write it out this way. I'm going to write it out really complicated, but it's not complicated, right? Uh, Jim Simmons would uh, disagree. Jim Simmons, I know the name. A, B, X plus C, uh, D, X plus A, B, C, D, E, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, X plus A, B, C, D, F, G, F, G. I gotta say my alphabet in a row, otherwise I don't know what's there, all right? So if it's a cubic function, then you're gonna have possibly three factors. You don't necessarily need to, because of the way this question is laid out, I'm assuming all the factors are going to be real number set, right? Seeing you do calculus, typing <laughs> typing is hard. Calculus is just, just a very fun time is what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, fun. It is, it is fun. If you understand it, you can... It's very meditative, by the way. You can take a look at a function and just break it down and graph it, find special points, right? So right now, remember these are the x intercepts for a function and there's could be some kind of multiple to the function right right now they've already told us this they've already told us that the x intercept it's got two x intercept now we don't know we can't confirm that it only has two x intercept but we're it has these two x intercepts for sure right now they've told us this do we have enough information to be able to do this i'm going to lay it out and then we'll see what we have right so they're telling us f of x is equal to a and one of the x intercepts is x is equal to negative three so if i write down i'm going to write it like this this isn't legit terminology but it's visually you understand what it means right x is equal to negative three you got x is equal to oh sorry x is equal to yeah negative three and x is equal to two and we don't know what this one is f of f x plus g okay and that's not the same f of x as this here let me rewrite this so you don't get confused okay i'm trying to lay it out in a way uh g h let's call it g h g h okay i'm trying to sort of explain it uh more than do it right now right so this isn't legit but what we do is we bring this guy over and we bring this guy over and then we can place it in so f of x is equal to a x plus 3 x minus 2 and we've got another factor here g times x plus h okay okay so far it cuts the y-axis at z oh it cost the zero well when i put that y intercept of negative six that's the point zero and negative six right so what we could do right now is this when it says it cuts the y-axis at zero and negative six that's what that means right slick mick i think you you've missed the zero it, i didn't miss the zero if i say y intercept is negative six it's implied that x is zero because the only way you can cut the x-axis at negative 6, then the y, and then the x has to be 0. So if I say y int is equal to negative 6, then that means 0 and negative 6. Okay. What are differentials in calculus? You're finding the slope of a function. That's really it. Okay. Is that clear, Slick Mick? I hope so. Now, what they've done as well, they've given us a point. So we can plug in this point in this function, right? Zero for x and negative six for y. 
ah, okay, perfect. My mistake. No, it's, it's not a mistake. It's a misconception. A lot of people have a hard time. Like, for example, when I say x x intercept of negative 3, what's the coordinates that I'm giving you? Slick Mick. Rick no, 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 it's, 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 you're just learning this, right? So if I say x intercept of negative 3 and 2, what are these points? What are these points, Slick Mick? Let us know before I continue. By the way, my snacks, bacon cooked up a whole bunch of bacon I hope you know if there are veggies out there you're okay with this exactly eraser negative 3 and 0 and 2 and 0 right the maple syrup bureaucracy kills by the way how you doing these are maple bacon they're already dipped in maple us canadians like maple syrup and everything sorry y is also zero on x intercept and x always zero on the y intercept exactly right so they've given us a point this because we know that's the y intercept which gives us zero and negative six Good job, my man. Thanks for actually gives. So what we could do is just plug that in for x and y in this function. Okay. Let me erase this and let's do it. And we're just playing right now. Let's see what it gives us. So the y is negative 6. That's your f of x, right? So negative 6 is equal to a. x is 0. 0 plus 3. 0 minus 2 g times 0 is 0 plus h okay cool now what we can do is just multiply this out you're going to get negative 6 is equal to but up but up but up that's going to be 3 a times 3 times negative 2 times h which so negative 6 is equal to a h times negative 6 divide by negative 6 so a times h is equal to 1. Okay. Does that work? I hope that's clear. So a times h is equal to 1. So we've got two unknowns here, a and h. Ah, what are we going to do? Well, we haven't figured out the other factor yet. Right? We don't know the g and we don't know the h and we don't know the a. We know these guys. Right? So keep this in mind. I'm running out of room a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm going a little bit too, uh, I theor not theoretical, but experimental with this. I'm playing around with this a little bit too much, directly solving this, okay? So take a look at this thing. They want us to verify that this function, uh, the cubic function has this information is this guy. Well, what we can do is if we sub in x is equal to negative 3 what should f of x be now keep this in mind we might not continue this this is just an aside to a certain degree right if they just want us to verify that we have a half day today because there was testing so i am here uh, to hang out uh, earlier than normally would awesome grand now for us i really don't even know if we could find the other factor for this because they didn't give us the other x-intercept, right? And we needed another point. So going down this route, if they didn't give us this, verify that this is the function, we probably wouldn't come up, be able to come up with the function because we don't have another point on the graph. We would need the other point on the graph. But for us to verify that this is the function, all we got to do is this. Take a look. What's y going to be equal to if we sub in negative 3? For this function we, you guys have already answered it what's f of negative 3 going to be what should f of negative 3 be right and on that note what should f of 2 be right and if we want to verify that the x-intercept is negative 6 what do we need to do what do we plug in for the x value to find out what the y-intercept is SQL, how are you doing? Just got back from work. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I misread the question. It also cuts at 
X oh yeah we would need the other X intercept by the way we need the other X intercept as soon as I got down to here I'm going wait a second we're missing one bit of information right if it also cuts at the X is equal to negative one then check this out uh, this would be this would be x equals negative one so x plus one and this would be zero plus one and this would be one right so one so one so a is equal to one and free assange free assange free assange right right i'm just going to make clean this up a little bit one so this would be a times negative six divided by negative six so a is equal to one cool what does this a value mean the a value is this guy here the number in front of the x cubed right the number in front of the x cubed free assange and part assange indeed all right so let me ask you this if f of negative three what would f of negative three equal what does this side equal it has to equal zero if it's a factor of this now we can by the way now we can continue with this because we, get, we got the other bit of information and negative one all right but just to answer this question and then i'm going to erase this line and we're going to continue with the train of thought right it should be zero right so all we got to do is confirm that when we plug in x is equal to negative three here it's going to equal zero so what we can do is go negative three cubed plus two times negative th three squared minus five times negative three minus six negative three cubed is negative 27 oh that's what you were punching in Graham. awesome thank you negative uh three squared is nine nine times two is 18. negative three times five but it's negative is going to be plus 15 minus six and if you add all those up that's going to be negative 33 and that's going to be positive 33 so it's equal to zero so this whole thing is going to be equal to zero so we just confirm that x is equal to negative three is an x intercept and you're going to get the same thing for two right you're going to get that equal to zero and if you plug in x is equal to zero because that's what it's telling you if you find f of zero well that's going to be zero because zero cubed is zero zero squared is zero times two is zero five times zero is zero so it's going to be negative six so we just confirm that as well and if you want to confirm x is equal to negative one f of negative one you plug it all in that's also going to be zero okay that confirms it but let's drive the equation like the way i said we don't even need this guy right so i'm going to erase this right let's take this out so once we want to drive it we got the a is equal to one so all we have to do is go back to here Whoop. right we just take it back to here right and plug in a is equal to one foil this whole thing out we're going to end up with that all right so let's do it so this is going to be f of x is equal to where are we? is equal to one times x plus three times x minus two times x plus one now the one is just one you don't care about that it doesn't do anything foil this baby out all right so this is going to be x plus three that's going to be x squared plus x minus two x minus two combine those guys you get negative x and then foil this guy in or expand this guy in so that's going to be x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 6. combine your like terms you got x squared that guy and that guy combined becomes plus 2x squared this guy and this guy combined you get minus 5x minus 6. Is that the same as that it is indeed and that's it you just confirmed it right i hope that's okay straight up uh, and this would be like grade 11 math in my part of the world 
some other parts of the world this is like grade eight okay the graph of g of x intersects f of x above cool we've got two functions we've got layered right let f of x equal g of x and solve the resulting equation to find the coordinates where g of x cuts f of x part two okay awesome the graph of g of x into makes sense okay maple leaf it is not verified with coefficients is that for part two of the question is that what you're punching in no you're doing this part you're doing this a i wonder why are you doing abc because you're trying to find abc oh that's what you're trying to do g of x uh, they they have to give us g of x right equation resulting to find the coordinates where g of, yeah you need g of x slick mick otherwise we don't know right so watch this i'm going to erase all this i'm going to keep this guy up here okay so this was part one p1 and let's going to do let's do p2 okay this is big brain stream <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i would call it big brain stream i would call it uh, just math stream hopefully we don't get smooth brain so check this out part two says this you got a function g of x g of x which is equal to negative 2x minus 6 and they're asking you when does this function cross this function when does g of x hit f of x right so for now for us to get a visual let's graph it and you'll you'll get a feel for what this looks like right so let's do a little graph i'm going to give myself a little bit of room let's graph g of x first g of x the y-intercept is negative six and the slope is negative two right so you're going to go one two three four five six that's the y-intercept and the slope is negative two which is negative two over one so you go one two down and one over here's g of x okay this is g of x let's graph f of x okay <laughs> let's graph f of x the x-intercept of negative 3, 2, and negative 1, right? So negative 3. Now, I don't know where that is right now, but I'm going to go negative 3 is here. Negative 3, 2, and negative 1. And the y-intercept of negative 6. Wait a second. They cross at negative 6. Same location. Cool. Okay. Am I doing homework? I don't know if I'm doing homework. Hopefully, it's not uh, slick mix homework. Uh, hopefully it's trying to understand how this works right and the coefficient the way you graph cubic functions or polynomial functions higher degree or any polynomial function if the number in front of the leading coefficient is positive and the highest degree the degree the highest exponent is odd then the function opens like this so this thing is going to go like this like this like this okay and this is f of x so how many places is this function going to cross most likely one two three we already know this one we already know that it crosses at x is equal to negative six because the y-intercept is both x is equal to negative six right so what we're talking about is this they cross here so this is going to have an x and a y point they cross here which is 0 and negative 6 and they cross here which is going to be x2 and y2 it's a different point right hopefully this isn't too small it looks pretty small on my on my screen no no not my homework just wanted to better understand uh, what sample problems i've attempted before but get trapped somewhere or another yeah which is fine and you know what even if it's your homework that's fine we're doing it right now which means you're going to learn it right 
because there's no way we can do your whole homework it's not gonna work right at some point you're gonna have to write a test and this layers right if you don't understand this you won't understand future stuff coming up so consider it like I said as a drop in math tutoring session right it's a class right where we're talking about mathematics I'm going to show you how to do certain things if there's a problem you have you ask me and we do it right it's about learning not about getting somebody else to do your work for your copying right so take a look at this thing we're looking for these three points we already got this one the y intercept here was negative six the y intercept here was negative six so we know they cross each other 12 hour stream for my test please <laughs> Now take a look at this thing. How are we going to find this point and we're going to find this point? And finding where they cross means this. At this point, this x and this y, this point exists both on this function and on this function, right? Obviously. Here's g of x, here's f of x. That point is on both functions, right? So what we're doing here, here, let me do this in red so you see the difference. Hopefully this will come out. All right. That's f of x, right? <laughs> red and brown are pretty much the same color. So at this point, this x is the same as this x is the same as that x. And this y is the same as this y because g of x is really y. Is the same of same as f of x right so what we can do is say hey where they cross their x's are the same and their y's are the same so all we need to do is say ah set g of x equal to f of x f of x we want to find out when g of x hits f of x they cross each other if we solve the both equations we can reach the point coordinate points right we set them equal to each other i usually tell my students we're doing when we're doing this if you call this y1 and y2 you're setting y1 equal to y2 not this y equal to that y but this function equal to that function so all we've got to do now is set negative 2x minus 6 is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Yeah, we'll take this off because we already know what we're talking about, right? Give ourselves a little bit more room. Minus 6. So all we've got to do now is solve this x equation, right? So whenever you have x is to different powers you want to bring everything to one side and set it equal to zero so i'm going to grab this duvicky and bring it over right so when you bring it over the sign flips so this becomes plus 2x plus 6 right and what i do when i bring them over i line them up according to which ones we're going to mix them with right they can combine like terms this side is zero right this side becomes x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x and negative 6 and 6 is 0 is equal to what's left on this side 0 cool we don't even need synthetic division anymore now what do you need to do you need to factor this because you're trying to solve this equation how do you solve this equation this is difficult to solve if you're not aware of should we say it again how do you multiply a times b times c times d is equal to 0 how do you figure out what a b c and d are the only way that's possible is that if at least one of them is equal to zero right maple leaf how are you doing maple leaf mm -hmm. bacon <laughs> maple bacon it's a great snack i don't know on the healthy side i don't think so but good protein good fat how do we factor this because that's what we need to do 
we've taken a function that is something plus something plus something is equal to zero something plus something plus something is equal to zero and we want to factor this into things multiply together to give us zero we want to factor this into this times this times this is equal to zero the reason we want to do that is because we can as soon as you have things multiply together to give you zero you can set each one equal to zero so you can go this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero or that is equal to zero and free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Okay. I do not eat bacon, maple leaf says. We, we divide every term uh, x cubed. No. You factor it. Don't divide every term by x cubed. Okay. What you're going to do is factor this thing. How do you factor this thing? How do you factor this thing? What's the easiest way to factor this thing? Factoring means first type of factoring you always look for. Always, always, always. GCF. Is there a GCF here? Thank you for the follows, by the way, gang. Okay. Is there a GCF in this function? If there is, what is the GCF in this function? What is the GCF in this function? And GCF means greatest common factor, right? What do they, what does this term and this term and this term have in common? It's the X, right? So take out an X from all of them. X out of X cubed x out of 2x squared x out of 3x if you take an x out what do you got left what do you multiply x by to give you x cubed x squared what do you multiply x by to give you 2x squared 2x what do you multiply x by to give you negative 3 x negative 3 cool so we already got one of these guys we already got this guy right perfect then what do we do maple leaf good right then what do we do now you got to factor this how do you factor this well this x in front stays now you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you negative three add to give you two because when you do that you can factor this now x x three times negative one gives you negative three 3 plus negative 1 gives you 2. Plus 3 minus 1. Look at this. We've got three things multiplied together to give us 0. How do we solve this? We solve it by setting each one equal to 0. So x can equal 0. x plus 3 can equal 0. And x minus 1 can equal 0. This means x is equal to negative 3. And x is equal to 1 these are our x's right when x is equal to zero this function crosses this function well we can't just write down the x because if you're on a cartesian coordinate system x and y you need both an x and a y right so what you do is sub and zero for x in g of x or f of x to find out what the y associated with it is all my x's live in texas <laughs> right if you're going to do that you can do it in both functions doesn't make a difference you're going to get the same value check this out g of zero is going to be negative six f of zero is going to be negative six so the point where they cross is zero and negative six right if you set in zero for x this disappears so g of zero is negative six if you put in zero for x here, these disappear, so you get negative six. Uh, gx is much gx is much easier. For zero, it's ridiculously easy anyway. All the x's disappear, right? How about negative three? Let's do it here. Not f of negative three. Let's do g of negative three because it's way easier. G of negative three is going to be 
negative 2 times negative 3 minus 6, right? Yeah. So that's going to be 6 minus 6, so that's going to be 0. What? Oh, look. The other point is negative 3 and 0. So it's right here. That's the other point. Right? If you plug in x is equal to negative 3, right? you're going to get the same answer. You're going to get y is equal to 0. Cool. Well, take a look at that thing. We already knew when x is negative 3, that's going to be 0 because it's an x-intercept. Very cool. Yeah, to find a y-intercept for the new function, for the new function that we found. Let's try 1 g of 1 g of 1 is going to be negative 2 times 1 minus 6 which is going to be negative 8 so the point is 1 and negative 8 so this point here my graph isn't very accurate that was a 1 1 and negative 8 this point here was negative 3 and 0 you just found the three places where this function crosses this function and you can check this sub and x is equal to 1 for f of x, right? So f of 1. 1 cubed is 1, plus 2 times 1 squared is going to be 2, minus 5 times 1 is 5, minus 6. So that's going to be 3 minus 5 is negative 2, minus 6 is negative 8. We've got the same answer, right? Same answer, same answer. That's our first point. That's our second point. That's our third point where oh you don't even see the bottom guy my bad Oop, there you go do you see it now Boop. hey come on stick Oop. those are my painter's tape holding on the bottom there you go All right i hope that makes sense it's a good question this thing comes up in uh, grade 11 in my part of the world too uh Slick Mick, uh, what grade are you in? And which part of the world are you from? We're, I want to find out what grade you're in that you're getting these types of questions. What grade are you in? And where? Bacon. <laughs> bacon. Bacon. Maple bacon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is going to focus. I don't know. Vegetarians are going to freak if they see this. Crafter, how are you doing? Well, they probably won't. Hope you're doing well. Fun? Very powerful. That's in my part of the world for sure. In Canada, they teach this in, if you're lucky, you get it in grade 10. Okay, if you have a good teacher. Most students would encounter this in grade 11. However, in some parts of the world, you're gonna encounter this in grade eight. Okay, I'm pretty sure in Russia, they're seeing this in grade seven or eight. In grade eight, the latest. Okay. In Iran, they're getting this in grade eight. Okay still trying to understand the wonders of thermodynamics oh thermodynamics crazy difficult thermodynamics i found i found uh my perception uh understanding of thermodynamics heat and water flow um i found those to be the most difficult for me to comprehend in physics anyway um flow you can like fluid dynamics so thermal dynamics and fluid dynamics fluid dynamics you could sort of associate it to uh electricity right and electricity magnetism is is not that bad it's uh, conceptually it's it's understandable because we see it all the time uh, but i found thermodynamics and hydro uh, uh yeah water difficult and they are difficult they're very chaotic water is anyway uh, it's interesting powerful I'm gonna erase this Graham the three hardest classes I ever had for my physics degree classical mechanics 
physical optics and thermal physics so tough out of control out of control right i was okay with classical mechanics uh optics is difficult as well optics i found yeah it was the flips and the it was a lot of geometry and optics and thermal physics thermodynamics difficult luckily it's only the beginning of thermodynamics it's going to get harder i like modern physics what do you mean with modern physics classical mechanics graham that's just are we talking about classical mechanics like projectiles and stuff and what's modern physics what do you consider modern physics to be Salute, gang. I hope you guys have good snacks and good drinks. Tea. When you're doing work, it's nice to have math work. It's nice to have little snacks here and there. It doesn't have to be bacon. Hopefully, it's healthier snacks that you have. Classical mechanics. Mm. Modern physics is like relativity, um, derivation of speed of light physics from the last 100 years or so okay so you're going into uh, yeah relatively derivations of the speed of light okay but uh classical mechanics projectiles projectiles are found to be some of the easiest apparently we'll be getting one of our hardest classes next semester controls and systems oh what are you in crafter this sounds like uh, engineering class yeah are you in, are you in like hydrogeology or something i've taken hydrogeology classes they're super cool but you said you were oh thermodynamics what are you in what the, what i'm in engineering yeah sounds like engineering chicho you might think so but this was junior level college mechanics lots of gradients and taylor C taylor series whoa i've done taylor series back in the day but i don't remember it I would have to do some serious review on that stuff. Taylor series, really? I seriously would have to look that up. Fourier transforms and stuff. That stuff was super cool, man. Super cool. You're like, well, how does this work? You do it and it works, and you're like, well, how does this work? And trying to get the how and why's was very difficult. It was more do, do. Arash, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Oh yeah, Fourier transform, La Laplace, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Graham, I'm with you. Uh, Lagrange math, yeah. I found that stuff difficult as well. I did, just because conceptually I really didn't understand what was going on back then. Anyway, I haven't looked at it since. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, crafter, you get a lot of that stuff in engineering, um, and I've for me, I've taken some of those classes as well. Uh, it's so cool actually it's very difficult to relate that hardcore math to real world very difficult I agree with you Graham and unfortunately our education system doesn't even try to relate it not even at the university level right it was it was more like just do it's like what am I doing oh just do it it runs a filter through it and you get this out of it okay <laughs> what is this some kind of magic wand <laughs> when i was taking it at some point i'll get back into it and look at it but uh, we'll do that as a meditative uh, meditative project i guess it's quite uh it's quite a difference with high school math very different with high school math uh very different uncle sweetheart how are you doing very complicated so many factors so many factors like everyone's everyone's toning in <laughs> giving their comments we all had a bad time it's just symbols on the blackboard <laughs> and the and the symbols they say oh this is this this is lambda this is lambda here's lambda it's the wavelength of some kind of function well what is that function oh it's a function that you run through with this lambda and you change the lambda and you get different filters what 
Now I understand it more, even though I don't know it. I understand why aspect of more, even though I don't know the how of it anymore. Back then I knew how to do it, but I didn't know the why of it. Weird, eh? When they teach it to you, they show you how to do it, but you don't know why you're doing it. As you get older, right, you understand why some of these things exist, but you no longer know how to do it, or I don't anyway. Graham, I took a class in college called Mathematical Methods of Physical Sciences. The professor of that classes, class's daughter ended up being one of my students. Oh, no way. Super cool, man. Super cool. Super cool. And free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Okay. Gotta do, gotta do, gotta do. <laughs> Fine. What else should we do, Yang? What else should we do? Everyone's pretty chill right now. Fun. And we could talk about whatever if you guys want to talk. Just and we are basically talking about crazy. Let's talk about light. Light. Oh my god. Light. Light is uh, trigonometry, really. Laugh out loud the free Assange ASMR. Haha. <laughs> Force gender reassignment. And optics. Oh god, optics. <gasps> optics. Optics. I have a theory. What's your theory? What's your theory, Uncle Sweetheart? That light rays do not travel in straight lines. Ah, uh, light rays do bend. That's one thing we know. They are curved, right? Salute to you as well. Reassignment. Obeying the laws of the Fibonacci sequence. You think they bend according to the laws of Fibonacci sequence? How so? A negative and a positive. A negative and a positive. Uh, meaning they crisscross each other meaning they crisscross each other so Fibonacci sequence by the way light does bend that was from Einstein's theory of relativity right you get the optic effect right so if you have a huge body right so let's say there's a huge body of something and we're the observer here right we're standing here and uh, you get the lens effect I think it's called the lens effect right if you get another body here right if light is traveling from this and is going through this body or past this body the light bends to come to us right? light bends to come to us bends here and then goes straight right so light does bend but the fibonacci sequence let's check this out uh, meaning they crisscross otherwise the intensity of light wouldn't dissipate over space Light ten bends around masses proportional to said mass. Yeah, now bend the other way, Chicho. Crossing each other. Bend the other way, crossing each other. Like this one, bend the other way. How so? The diamond shape are bigger, far away, up. Bend the other way, like this. Like that. And Fibonacci sequence is this again. Uh, well, not zero, but zero, one, one, uh, two, three, five, uh, eight, uh, 13, uh, 21, etc. Right? I wish I could show you some pics. Post it on our Discord. That's a curve. Oh, so what do you need? The diamond shapes are bigger, far away, less intense, up then bend the line down crossing the other bend the line down bend the line down so like this post in discord yeah post in discord it's like a net think of this chicho rays coming out of the source yes now many uh many any many in 3d sphere oh so you're saying this stuff is going oh like a like this and then here as well of course right like 
Why? Why do you think that is? That's that's the case. The diamonds close to the source are very tiny, concentrated, intense. Yes, this is why we aren't burnt or blinded by the sun. Imagine the Earth, where the second sphere is. Here. Oh, so you're saying if this was the Earth, the reason the Earth doesn't get burned is because the rays are ricocheting to a certain degree, right? And why light loses intensity over space? Well, one of the reasons we're not burned is because of the magnetic field, right? Listen, okay, let's check it out. This is why. This is why. What is it? And why light loses intensity over solar panels, yeah? get better at an angle and not flat do they no prize incoming no prize incoming for actually kills the rays don't hit the earth at 90 degrees or straight they're coming in at angles in every direction okay but is not not because of the magnetic field right if they did a solar panel would max efficiently flat not at 30 degree angle is uh i don't know that is solar are solar panels um efficiently in 90 degrees so you're saying this right so let's assume this is a solar panel right here's a solar panel right so this is the front of the solar panel and if the light is shining I was assuming that this the rays would be from the sun would be coming in hitting directly and you would get the most out of it but you're saying that because they do this it's actually more efficient to bend the solar panel to be a 30 degrees right I'm gonna draw the same thing so you want this angle well, my 30 degrees sucks but uh, 30 degrees so maybe 30 degrees here let me read, keep on reading uh, not a 30 degree angle it's a less efficient flat okay and the most they can get is like only 40 percent efficiency out of a panel if the panels were cone shaped yeah the cone shape i know it would pick up rays from every direction not straight chicho remember curved rays both directions oh yeah that's right not a diff uh direct hit the panel angled angle so you're going like this and both directions like that cool you may want to review how solar panels work mechanically yes so that's what you're saying okay cool i don't know i don't know the inner workings of solar solar panels but i know the tube shaped ones are more efficient so they can make cylindrical solar panels and they become more efficient but i haven't learned i don't know the reason why you're saying that's the reason why and it's three-dimensional so it's not just that they're going like this they're also coming in this way and this way so that's the reason that we you're, you're saying it right it has to do with how the light travels from the sun curve rays in every direction fibonucci law where's the fibonucci law come into place this is why the source is a small globe bright so why where is the fibonucci coming to this where's the fibonucci coming to this fibonucci is a curve is it not is it a curve graham is fibonucci a curve it's a spiral it's a spiral yeah it's not a curve yeah it's a spiral right you can make the golden we've we've got a video on that the fibonucci sequence and the golden spiral right so you're saying the rays curve as like this right so let me see if i can make this we have we have a couple of videos out there we generate the golden spiral right if you do chicho here i'll link it up for you guys okay so you know what we're talking about here the far away globe the far away globe link it to us in our discord page brother uh, let's see if this is going to focus let's make sure focus. there you go focus okay let me find you the the videos we did and we did this a while ago uh, uh, rolling 
there we go there's one and there's the other and so here's these guys here's me on the ground on a tennis court drawing the using the Fibonacci numbers to create the golden rectangle okay and here is the way my friend who's an artist generates the golden ratio rectangle uh, going from the outside in using the angles i generated using the the fibonacci sequence oops come on where is this that's the first video and this is the second or the second link is the first video and those uh is the next one not in testo the big ba, 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 ba. the far away is very big not in testo okay also mirrors do you do you have a link yeah i just linked it up brother those rays never stop curling over space possibly possibly i'm not well versed enough to know uh regarding that so uh, it is like anything is possible the one thing i do know is we know very little <laughs> <laughs> like really Graham uh, to sweetheart so the most important question how could you prove this aha very good Graham is asking a very good question how do you prove this right cause it like for this was this my blue where is my oh there's we'll use a blue like the, I really the solar panels I'm not well versed in right but as far as I know uh, spherical or a cylindrical solar panel is more efficient than a flat solar panel right so just because that is the case that's not proof enough that the light rays bend like this how do you prove it that is the key and then how do you repeat that proof that's the scientific method right you come up with a hypothesis you take measurements right you do your calculations you do your thing and you hypothesize what could be and then you do your measurements you measure that you see that thing happening can it be repeated does it stand the test of rigor we can write an actionable hypothesis yeah Graham is very good at that by the way uh, going through the steps required to be able to come up with a conclusion right my immediate thought is that you could design a series of solar panels in various shapes measure their efficiency and go from there yeah that would be my approach as well have and the different curves would be it right and i'm pretty sure this data must be available right the solar panels have been around for how long now how many decades now there must have been experiments done to try to optimize solar panels right so if you could get access to that data and figure out which curvature because it doesn't have to be just like this it could be the solar panels could be like this or like this right so which one's more efficient what's the cause of divergence in a laser beam i don't know graham do you know what the cause of divergence in a laser beam is or anybody else do you guys know what the cause of divergence in a laser beam is i'm not even curved rays i don't even know what divergence in a laser beam really means right what is divergence in like in what respect yeah like what is what is divergence hello Gina how are you doing hello are you saying there's internal divergence in cylindrical panels I'm, I'm not saying anything but I think uh, uncle sweetheart is possibly saying or refraction at ref, refraction at least okay the further away the bigger the dot the bigger the dot the further away why would it get bigger okay the further away the bigger the dot over space it's curving now is 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 it light that's curving or is light following the curvature of space-time like those red laser beams lights I don't know I didn't I haven't really played around with laser beams too much that's the kicker right I'm not very good at the laser stuff also duller i think the pro the thing with laser beam is you have to condense the the light to be able to project the laser beam otherwise light disperses right is that what you're talking about it's diffusing through space 
almost like a flashlight if you took just a section of that i don't know i would have to look at drawings for me to uh, comprehend what's going on bacon maple bacon mm. gram and the diffusion rate is according to the chemical makeup of the air yeah hard without illustration um uncle sweetheart do an illustration post on our discord page i'm pretty sure there'll be people interested in it i am curious you should stay more focused in a vacuum and free assange free assange free assange okay in a vacuum uh is really the true speed of light the the projection of light right so it's not going through some kind of gram there's an experiment you can do where you shine a laser distance meter through a, a glass container with different densities of liquid which causes a later laser distance meter to read different values yeah right depending on what the medium is that light is traveling and it travels actually the speed of light is absolute so it it refracts right felix how are you doing hey chicho i had a lesson on differentials today so this stream is well timed awesome differentiation differentiation did you guys do polynomials no felix the speed of light is absolute only in a vacuum it moves at different speeds in different mediums okay thank you for the correction graph right so speed of light absolute in a specific medium right or in a vacuum well it would be it would be um the same speed for a given uh, uh material right does learning math help to earn make a lot of money uh, look i can't guarantee you that learning math will help you to earn and make a lot of money but i can guarantee you this it will not hurt right so it is an asset that you can accumulate knowledge that you accumulate that will never make you earn less money it will definitely it can definitely help you make more money and make you allow you to make more informed decisions um, on your finances C is absolute anywhere just atmosphere refracts light so it runs biggest path longest uh, shortest path shortest path learning math is a good investment in yourself indeed it's the most valuable asset you can accumulate uh you can acquire to help you make more money there's no doubt about it and if you're only interested in making money the best thing you can do is learn mathematics like there's nothing else comes close really like that would be it how do i know when i am done with a math topic and i'm ready to move on to another um in our education system they like to put a break between the different topics right but that's not the way it is right think of mathematics as a language when are you done learning about adjectives so you can move on to pronouns so you can move on to verbs are you ever done learning about adjective pronouns and verbs are you ever done learning about how to put a sentence together like just imagine writing a sentence right that says exactly what you want to say right so let's assume you have this i like apples i like apples right are you done with that sentence is that the only way you can say that sentence no it's not you can say apples I like 
apples I like. When you learn to say I like apples, were you done with the language of mathematics or like with the language of English? Were you done in knowing how to say I like apples or are you better for it? Do you have more power at your disposal knowing that you could say it this way? Apples I like, right? Obviously, the answer is now you know more. Mathematics is the same way. And, you know, they teach you how to deal with frac plus and minus. And then they teach you how to deal with multiplication and division. And then they teach you how to move around an equal sign. But if you understood mathematics, you would know that adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all of these is just adding, right? What? And as soon as you learn about the equal sign, they say, initially they say, these are equations you're solving, right? Initially they say these are equations. All right? And then you find out they're not really equations, they're functions, right? They're functions. And what are these functions? Well, equations are just functions for a given y or x value. What? And then what are these functions? These are models. Models. Models of what? Things that are going on in our everyday lives, right? And it's just a continuous. And how do you manipulate these? Wow. Right? Uh, manipulate, manipulate, blah, 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 right? And just continues, continues, continues. Okay. So I don't know if you're ever done with mathematics. It's just a tool at your disposal that you can use as a language we have to analyze the world around us. Are we ever done with English? No, we just use English. We were learning about Felix. We we're learning about finding the minimum or maximum turning point of a polynomial graph using differentiation. Example: find the gradient formula for a graph and making it equal to zero. The turning point. Awesome. We just talked about this earlier, in the in the stream. I'm not really interested in making money at all. My overall life plan is to work a humble manual labor trade job in a rural area, to be a uh, and in nature as much as possible sure Felix you can do that but you can use and this is something we all need to do right we need to have some kind of nest egg investment now you can invest in your knowledge you can invest in your house you can invest in your community you can invest in your family right you can invest in your farm you can invest in your home you can invest in many things but you need to invest you can't just live day to day you have to know about the past, be in the present, and think about the future, right? Now, if you have mathematics, you can sort of, be, and this is just because of our current geopolitical economic system, you can use mathematics to make sure that you're going to be stable over an extended period of time. Just do your calculus and figure out what it is that you're going to need, what your expenses are going to be, and stuff like this. So mathematics can help you on that front. Irrelevant if you just want to work on a farm, uh, be self-sufficient and stuff like this, or you want to go rule the world, All right? Graham, uh, learning is always happening. It doesn't start or stop. There's always more to learn. I agree with Chicho. Our school system needlessly uh, compartmentalizes things in a way that is harmful, I feel. Yeah, and that is exactly how I feel about it. Like when I work with my students, when I teach, and you guys must have noticed this when we do in these sessions, I don't necessarily just stick with adding and subtracting. I jump all around this thing because it's all relevant, right? It's all very important and it applies everywhere. I like to earn money enough money Felix says to buy a plot of land with fertile soil build my own house homestead and live off the land until the end of my days awesome Felix but you need to have a safety net right which country do you live in is healthcare covered if it's not covered you have to have a certain amount of money put aside to deal with potential problems that you might encounter with your health okay or things that might go wrong with the house you live in pipe blows right if a pipe blows you need to bring in specialists to fix the pipe 
right? Maybe a water main, maybe a gas pipe or whatever it is, right? You need to hire someone to come and deal with your thing, right? You have to have a nest egg on the side. So if you know mathematics, you can probably build up your nest egg a lot faster because the mathematics will allow you to be able to understand the different types of investments that you can make in our current geopolitical economic system to build up your nest egg to have that safety net, right? Continue investing yourself, indeed. And investing yourself and family and community uh, is the best investment, really, you can make, right? Uh, your name is difficult. It in this BXJ. Very interesting. Thank you. My pleasure. Olive Bar. This is my type of ASMR. Educational, discussion, fun. Uh, win, win, win. Hey, what is your level of math? Pick the old success. I teach mainly high school mathematics. My level of mathematics, my education is I got my degree in Jew. I majored in geophysics with a minor in mathematics. And I worked as a geophysicist for about 10 years. I'm about to eat a giant slab of fish. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm eating bacon. Bacon. Bacon maple bacon i'm popping maple bacon mm. it's very good actually it's super delicious look at that is that going to be our thumbnail is that going to be our thumbnail yep maybe felix i live in the uk and luckily Healthcare is covered here. I found a self-sufficient commune in Wales that I'd like to live in for a few years once I finish leave college. Awesome, Felix. You're acquiring experiences. And one other thing that you're doing is you're building connections. Great investment. Graham, also distinct school subjects are largely in an illusion. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, like that's take that to heart, gang. Distinct school subjects are largely an illusion. There's math and physics. There's history and math. There's writing and history. There's everything and everything else. Indeed, you have to have a holistic approach to education, period, and to life, period, right? Pick Dean 06. Cool. I have a PhD in math and fractal analysis for my part. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. What's this? What's this? <laughs> pick them. That's great. Uh, Graham says that's great to pick them. Uh, stick around. We may need to ask some questions. <laughs> Micro twist. What are you eating? Bacon. Maple bacon. Very delicious bacon, maple bacon. <laughs> Super fun, Felix. Have you seen the new season of Attack and Titan? What I seen when was this new season released? The first episode came out. <gasps> what I didn't know this, dude. Thank you. Okay, we're ending the stream. <laughs> Attack and Titan is out. <laughs> they have a new animation studio, and it's absolutely stunning. Dude, Felix, you just made my day. I'm gonna make write a little note to myself. Attack on Titan. What the hell? Attack on Titan. Man, it's long overdue. What the hell? What's taking him so long? Bring it out, bring it out. Super cool. Thank you very much, Felix. Appreciate it. Anyway, I can drop a link in here. You can't drop a link in here. Um, you got to go to our Discord page. Go here. And we have a math folder, right? And if I don't know if we have a physics, we've got a science folder, all right? So you can drop the links there. I have illustrations on my uh, pine, uh, pine chart. Cool. Link it up in our Discord page, man. In the math folder. Okay. Felix, no problem. Dude, thank you. Attack on Titan, gang. If you guys haven't seen Attack on Titan, 
and uh, warning given it's pretty intense it's super super fantastic super fantastic super fantastic what a great animated series i even like the movie man the movie was fun too uh, but the tv uh, the the animated series this is season four is it not felix i think it's season four yeah i believe so and free assange free assange free assange right <laughs> i'll send some of the attack on titan fan art i drew yesterday to the discord i spent three hours on my back kills but it was worth it <laughs> nice i'd love to take a look at it hell yeah attack on titan was, was a fantastic there's amazing anime out there gang and uh and by the way felix we have a um if you're gonna link it up you can link it up in both in the anime folder and the comic book folder if you want because attack on titan has a graphic novel like i don't know how long it's been going for right you can link them up in both uh fantastic man i'm so looking forward to watching it and it's going to be released once a week hey i wish they did it one in, in one shot i do a whole marathon on it wait you watch anime Say, dude yeah i watch a lot of anime i love anime anime is amazing sage you do what's your favorite anime well you can't say there's so much amazing anime out there all right more of a general question i feel it is very difficult to live life without a strict routine otherwise i get too distracted or too involved with something and can't get enough done what are your thoughts on this um i think for some people need the discipline some people can do multitasking some people can do chaotic work uh, i think it's really personal and whatever works for you works for you banana stein hey 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 for me obviously you know i set my schedule i have discipline you know it, we've been streaming for three plus years now i guess and i've only had to cancel one stream right so i set up my schedules and i do boom 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 uh, so i i don't mind the discipline the times but i also do a lot of chaotic work right and i also love multitasking and sometimes it it seems like i'm not getting a lot done from my perspective anyway i know for i get a lot done i'm sure i'm creating a lot of work but what happens is i'm working on five or five projects on one shot and it takes a while for one of them to be done but when one is done the other ones go boom 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 they're all done right so that's my preferred way of doing it my favorite anime uh anime is naruto shippuden ah nice mine i, I love cowboy bebop samurai shampoo space dandy it's all the same studio those ones studio ghibli is amazing attack on titans fantastic um my hero academia more recent is amazing uh star, star blazers dude i just did a marathon uh, the first three seasons of star blazers from the 1978 series um like a few months ago i did a marathon on them i love anime under sweet left the link on your discord chicho coffee sig it's my it's my bacon haha <laughs> ah you're doing coffee and cigarettes <laughs> very philosophical channel i wish you all the best uh sasei thank you very much <laughs> i'm just a chicho vegan hunter god and thank you for popping in i'm glad you're liking the stream felix i just linked up my sketch in the animation channel discord awesome felix thank you as long as we are sowing seeds of your funeral cell future self i think it is productive indeed cowboy bebop and samurai sampler are awesome indeed and their soundtracks whoa 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 what soundtracks and samurai shampoo i give full credit to for introducing me to nuja bass right and nuja bass rest in peace one of the greatest music producers of all time right uh unfortunately he passed away way before his time banana stein i usually have a general plan for what i need to wait where to go doop, doop, doop. what i need to need to be done for the week 
and I just do whatever I feel like at the moment I've tried to follow a strict schedule but never works out for me yeah everybody different right cool Leo how you doing Chicho I don't know if I am catching the tail end or not but just letting you know my package arrived today right on can't wait to treasure this dm turner book forever awesome right on brother i'm so happy you got there have a great read through it man there's a lot there there is a lot there uh, a lot to process a lot to process and by the way gang if you guys don't want to know what's going on we did as a uh, appreciation of uh the people who've been here on uh on our live streams and watching my videos on youtube and stuff like this like i've been doing this for like 15 years right uploading videos and sharing content um but i've been on twitch for like three years right and as an appreciation for all the help and all the all the interaction we did a 1000th youtube upload video and that was our 400 plus twitch live stream where we auctioned off stuff and people using their channel points of winning things and we auctioned up comic books that i published in the 1990s uh jam uh that i made in the last couple of years two three years honey local um unpasteurized honey that we get in my area and two dm turner books okay and they're available for free online and those are treasures okay and one of them went to coolio bagman hunter my favorite was uh, kyoto animation by but they burnt down tt kyoto oh i don't what kyoto animation what did kyoto animation produce but Einstein, but i'm four months ahead from my class in physics and advanced mathematics so my way of doing it seems to work awesome and if it works for you that's the key right sage cage i love naruto because i was watching it when it aired and i was in high school haha <laughs> nice picadine you have you who have the soul of a teacher did you like assassination classroom i don't think i've seen assassination classroom assassination classroom i don't think i've seen it I've seen some high school uh, uh, what was that called uh, where they turn into zombies and the kids that was super good vegan hunter God laugh out loud the way you read my name it's like you find it mesmerizing bizarre <laughs> hashtag mission accomplished <laughs> awesome XBJ or BXJ have you heard of the anime psycho mod 100 yeah interesting anime stuff yeah i don't know i can't remember i seen psycho mob you know what i might have it's, it's a while ago is it not i think i might have seen it i can't remember right now mr beers can you explain your point system what are the purchases auctions uh it's just channel points if you click on the bottom in in chat if you click on the little face of a bearded person giving a sticking out his tongue that's me with a little infinity symbol right if you click on that there's points on there and we held an auction where people bid it on things that i was showing and the highest bidder won and then they redeemed their points oh my god door assassination classroom the ending still oh dude link this up i don't i haven't seen assassination classroom i gotta i gotta see this graham chicho for your information my package arrived too nice graham and graham ended up getting three things i think graham got honey uh strawberry and crab apple is that what you got graham felix could you explain the methods for completing the square i've always found it confusing complete square sure let's do it let's do complete square speedy gonzalez style tt is a cry face they created a silent voice you would love it i'm pretty deep and looks at people's morality uh va vegan hunted god link it up in our discord and i'll take a look at it chicho uh coolio uh, holy cow just realized this dm turner book was published in september 1994 that's the year and month i was born oh dude <laughs> check this out complete the square all right 
Completing the square, I got a video out there. If you do Chicho completing the square, you'll find it, right? I got a few videos out there, right? So Chicho completing the square. Chicho completing the square. Let me show you the main one. Or I don't know if there is a main one. There's a whole bunch of ones. Yeah, check this out. Here's the full-on ASMR version one that I put out. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a big smile on my face. Here's this one. Okay, take a look at this. I'm about to go through it with you. Speedy Gonzalez style, right? My Mob Cycle 100 is made by the creator of One Punch Man is amazing, so good, but are very comedic driven and highly enjoyable. Awesome. I, I, man, I don't know if I've seen it or it's something that I've seen in previews, the comic book previews. Mob Psycho, it's a kid that's dressed up in a black suit, right? Like, or black outfit. Is that Mob Psycho 100? take a look at complete square complete the square is to be able to express a quadratic function in a form where you can read it and graph it right so if you have a quadratic function a x squared plus b x plus c what you want to do is rewrite this rewrite in the form of f of x is equal to a x minus p squared plus q right yeah black outfit and mob so yeah that's the one i've seen it but i haven't seen the animation sounds like it yeah 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 i've seen the graphic novels for it but i haven't delved into it yet if you can brother uh ashwai link this up in our discord page under animation and i'll remember to grab it have a look through it so the reason we want to do this is because this and plus and minus if this number in front is negative you know the parabola opens down if it's positive you know the parabola opens up this is the axis of symmetry and this is the vertex the p and q are the vertex vertex and it's the opposite sign of side of p p and q are the vertex right so for example this is the way you do it right f of x is equal to negative 2 actually negative 3 x squared plus 18 x and plus two right let's say we want to graph this thing now this thing is difficult to graph because it's not in a form that we can just read it and get the vertex and graph everything right we can factor it find the x-intercepts take the average of the x-intercepts right if there are x-intercepts and then that's your axis of symmetry plug it back into the equation find the y part of the vertex and then graph it that way well there's a better way to do it it's an algorithm right you go like this, put brackets around the x squared and the x term. Make sure you take the coefficient in front of the x squared out of the bracket because you want the x squared to be solo, right? Uh, posted an image and short description of assassination classroom in your Discord so you remember to check it out later. Awesome. Thank you very much, Coolio. Okay. So you want to take the negative 3 out of the brackets, right? So if you take that out, you got x squared here but because the x term is inside the bracket you have to compensate for that and the way you compensate for that is you take whatever was here and divide it by whatever you took out of the bracket right so you divide this by negative three so that becomes negative six x plus two right because you're asking yourself what do you multiply negative three by to give you positive 18 well you multiply it by negative six right the next step is Take the coefficient in front of the x term, divide it by 2, and you're always in this step, always dividing it by 2. If you can simplify it, you simplify it. This becomes negative 3. Circle it. The reason you're going to circle it is because you're going to reference it. Circle it, square it, you get 9. Circle this because you're going to use that as well. Right? So I, when I'm doing mathematics in general, I like to highlight things that I'm going to use in different parts of my algorithm solution right now what you do is you add and subtract this number inside the brackets 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 2 some people say well why are you adding and subtracting was well, that's equal to 0 that's exactly why we're adding and subtracting because you can't just take a number and randomly add it to a function without changing the function right you don't want to change the function you just want to take this function which is in this form and rework it massage it 
to write it in this form so you can just read it and graph it right that's why you can only add zero to a function without changing it and nine minus nine is zero right this part is called completing a square that's what this whole thing is called this is called completing the square completing the square right why is it called completing a square because we're going to make a perfect square out of this thing okay and free assange free assange free assange right now what we're going to do is this part we're going to factor this guy we're going to take out of the bracket when you take this guy out of the bracket anything in front of the bracket is standing guard and whatever comes out of the bracket has to multiply this so you multiply this by negative three negative nine times negative three is positive 27 plus 27 okay in this part you ask yourself what are what are two numbers that multiply to give you nine and add to give you negative six you don't even have to think about it because it's this guy right here that's the reason we circled it negative three times negative three gives you nine negative three plus negative three gives you negative six right so this becomes negative three x minus three times x minus three well that's just x minus three squared two plus 27 is 29 cool we just completed the square we took an expression that was in this form and rewrote it in this form we took this and rewrote it like this now we can graph it let's graph it what does this tell us this tells us that the vertex is the opposite sign of negative 3 3 and 29 right what a pro does it does it in his head while looking at the camera instead of the board <laughs> i'm actually looking at the screen so i know where things are right <laughs> but thanks is magic mathematic right so 3 and 29 1 2 3 and let's say 29 is here right 3 and 29 what's the y-intercept of this function well the y-intercept you can grab from here right if you set x is equal to 0 this disappears this disappears and it's 2 so the y-intercept is 2 how, how to do it for quadratic forms and dimension n. <laughs> so here's the y-intercept is 2 the axis of symmetry axis of symmetry is x is equal to 3 that's the line where the parabola is symmetrical right if you do this hopefully this ear is just as far away this year well if this is 2 if this is 0 and 2 and the axis of symmetry is 3 what's the mirror point of this point well if the axis of symmetry is 3 there's a 3 there and a 3 there so this point becomes 6 and 2 right so now you can graph it because this thing opened down because it was negative right the only other thing left is to find your x-intercepts right and the x-intercepts are easy to find i have to go go read but i really like the content i'll definitely be back awesome mr beard beris beris thank you for popping in and thanks for coming back later right so if you want to find the x-intercepts boink boink well, on the x-intercept, the y is 0. We know that, right? So all we got to do is set f of x, the y, equal to 0 and isolate the x, right? Okay. 0 is equal to negative 3 x minus 3 squared plus 29. Here, let's do this here. Bring the 29 over. So negative 29 is equal to negative 3 x minus 3 squared. Divide by negative 3. So you get 29 over 3 is equal to x minus 3 squared, right? And then square root both sides. Square root of 29 over 3 is plus and minus the square root of 29 over 3 is equal to x minus 3. So your x-intercept is going to be, bring it down here, the x-intercepts are going to be 3 plus and minus square root of 29 over 3. Hey! What's the three? Does the three ring a bell? The three is your axis of symmetry, right? The three is your axis of symmetry. 
So the distance here and the distance here is here's three, right? And if you go three plus the square root of 29 over three, which is just a number, right? Three plus the square root of 29 over three, it's just the distance you're traveling from here to here. And if you go three minus the square root of 29 over three, that's just the distance that you're traveling here, right? So this point is three plus the square root of 29 over three and zero. And this point is three minus the square root of 29 over three and zero. This point right there. That's how you do complete the square and that's why it is so powerful. It takes something that you couldn't read and converts it to something that you can read that you just read it off and you just do it right powerful important right i hope that helped i hope that helped and that was felix right gang let's call the stream okay thank you for being here great discussions fantastic a little bit of mathematics a little bit of philosophy a little bit of light bending around objects and going all over the place cool 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 and uh, a little bit of discussion about education and every now and then free assange free assange free assange right thanks for the explanation my pleasure felix i hope it helps and check out the video i linked up it should help i i hope okay because i go through it slower and show you with the variables and we go through the whole thing and graph it and and it's slower right so you, you'll see what it how it plays out gang aside from that i am on patreon vegan hunter god chicho do you mind sparing two minute extra and give me a quick overview of how to rearrange different symbols pretty uh pretty pretty yeah for sure let's do it adios chicho and chat make sure to watch the new season of Oh, attack on titan watch this moving around just isolating a variable right so look isolating a variable you're just doing algebra my pleasure my pleasure uh, it would mean a lot to me a lot of people teach order of operations but i'm stuck at rearranging rearranging look they teach you bed mass right bed mass bed mass right they all say bed mass bed mass bed mass do your brackets exponents division multiplication and addition and subtraction and division multiplication and addition and subtraction have the same way right but bed mass is for simplifying it's not for solving when you're isolating variables you're solving okay when you're simplifying you go this way simplify when you're solving you go this way right you do you take care of addition subtraction first division multiplication and then exponents and then brackets right so it's the reverse order so whenever you're solving search for something you're solving for an equation you're trying to get an isolated variable so for example what if i gave this to you x minus b squared c is equal to y w over q divided by z here we'll add this here too plus is equal to K. What do you want to solve for? Let's say you want to solve for X. Solve for X. Right? It means you got to get X by itself. Cool. Let's do it. I always learn it as P, P as parentheses. Yeah. There's different ways they teach it, right? In my part of the world, they call it bet math. So we want to solve for X that means here i'm going to put this here so we don't lose the flow right solve for x solve for x right that means you want to get this by itself if you want to get this by itself you want to undo everything that is being done to it and this is an equal sign right well first thing we've got to do is do the addition subtractions first now remember this subtraction is inside the bracket you can't hit this up yet right so on this side of the equation you got to get rid of this guy first because that's an addition so if we're gonna get rid of the addition you grab this doohickey and bring it over which means really minus y w over q 
which means it becomes minus y w over q. And whenever you're solving for equations, line up. Uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. My dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> what you want to do, did she taught you pen, pen mass? What you want to do is line up your equal sign, right? So if I had enough room here, I would write my equal sign here. But we don't. So I'm going to write the equal sign here, right? And on this side, we got k minus y w over q. On this side, we got c x minus b squared over z. So do we have any more addition subtraction outside of the bracket? Because the bracket's over here. We don't. Because we already got these guys on this side, we want to get x by itself. That's what solving is, right? So what are we going to take care of next? Division multiplication. Okay, let's take care of the division multiplication. The x is inside the bracket. It's being squared, so that's an exponent. So you've got to take care of division multiplication outside of this. That's a c and a z, right? Well, how do you get rid of the c? You get rid of the c. The c is multiplying this. You do the opposite of multiplication, you divide. So you multiply this by something over c. The something is a z because the z here is on the bottom, is dividing the x. So how do you get rid of the z? You multiply it by z. z. So what happens here? c kills c, z kills z. Well, if you do something on one side, you got to do it to the other side. That's what an equal sign means, right? So you multiply this whole side by z and c, z over c, okay? So z over c, z over c, z kills z, c kills c. So right now we got x minus b squared is equal to k minus y w over q times z over c. Cool. We still need to get to the x. How are we going to get to the x? Unsweetheart, a wavelength or a y. Okay, I'm going to do this before I read that. Well, we we took care of addition subtractions. We took care of multiplication division that's being done to the x. Now what we got to do is exponents. So we got rid of we got to get rid of squared. How do you get rid of squared? You get rid of squared by squaring it or square rooting it, right? Square root is the opposite of square. So if you square root this side, you got to square root that side. Cool. So now we got on this side, x minus b, because the square root kills the squared, is equal to square root of k minus y w over q times z over c. What's left? We've got to take care of this. Well, that's x minus b. How do you get rid of negative b? Minus b, you add b. So you're going to grab this too. If you bring it over, it becomes plus b. So x is equal to square root of k minus y w over q times z over c plus b. That's your x. I hope that's clear. This is genius, JFK. <laughs> also, uh, Uncle Sweetheart, a wavelength of y on an xy axis is like sticking a rod into a globe. The further away this, the peaks and valleys are further apart, less intense. Peaks where the rays intersect. Valleys, the middle of the empty spaces. And sorry, pertaining to Earth. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, I gotta go to Discord and see the visuals of it now. Now that we know how light travels, we know how sound, radio travels too. Chicho, gonna rewrite the physics book. <laughs> I hope you do, man. I'll read it. This is genius. Uh, vegan hunter god is the b within the square root no the b is outside the square root remember the square root was here that's now one complete term you just needed to get this on that side so that's not inside the square root because it wasn't inside this uh, square root it was inside here right it wasn't on that side so it's the last step that you need to do okay I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Aside from that, gang, I hope this helped. The problem is I can't prove any of it. I'm not 
learned in the language of mathematics but the concept is common sense well sometimes common sense is not uh, correct okay I learned a lot of new things yes it's it's you are an amazing <laughs> my pleasure man I try my best anyway right gang we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live if that x hat square root of x how would we move a square root oh if this was squared or square root watch this i'm going to change this up square root square root square root square root square root how do you get rid of square root you square right so you square everything and that means you got to square this whole thing so x would equal this whole thing squared that's what you would do okay and free assange free assange free assange right gang okay awesome i'm glad that makes sense thank you my pleasure we are live streaming on twitch if you want to participate in that chat twitch whoop, is where you want to be at and gang thank you for the follows thank you for this for the subs even i understand that's awesome thank you for the subs uh thank you for being here thank you for the discussion thank you for the love uh thank you for sharing your perspective on things and i'm now at the quadratic formula awesome i really mean it would have thrown you uh my twitch prime if i hadn't used it or no worries no worries i'll be here for a while man i'm gonna be here for a long time next time thank you very much okay and mods thank you for taking care of business okay i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on parlor elo mines vk gab and Twitter and we do share additional content there as well so you can follow the work there and we do have a discord page and anytime you want you can come on to our uh, twitch page irrelevant if we're streaming or not and go to the chat chat and type in exclamation mark social and all the links will pop up and all the links will be in the description of this video okay and there's a lot of people sharing a lot of information on our discord page you're welcome to join we do upload the audio for live streams when we do open discussions with no visuals we have visuals right now no visuals to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform and we will be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot and a third platform most likely coming early 2021 and if you want to support this work on those platforms you can subscribe you can share you can like you can uh, comment you can turn on notifications guaranteed to give them get them through bitshoot not so much through youtube and if you're on youtube you can join youtube membership and there's a button there and for those of you who've joined youtube membership thank you very much for the support gang i hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic uh day night evening morning and we're we're back in two days and we're going to talk music and on the weekend saturday sunday we're doing comic book readings and then we're going to do a cooking session and meditation and more current events politics can you give us a 20 second overview of uh, what bitshoot is uh bitshoot is a video sharing platform that is free speech pl platform they're not censoring information think of bitshoot as being the equivalent of youtube in 2005 2006 youtube started off in 2005 got bought up by google in 2006 and it was a great platform to share information for a number of years until the censorship kicked in right so all of my content is not uploaded to youtube because of censorship because we don't want to get deplatformed there right we've got a thousand plus videos on there hundreds of math videos content that we've created so we don't want to risk being deplatformed there so everything is being loaded on bitshoot if the things are too sensitive they are not going on youtube right now the sensitive stuff is the current event discussions that we're having sometimes during some of the other streams a little bit of politics comes in and we talk about certain things that we cannot talk about on youtube so those don't get uploaded to bitshoot uh to youtube either okay and there are no advertisements on my videos on bitshoot there are on youtube it's supposed to be only at the beginning but youtube's putting them in at the in the middles as well okay and it's just a free speech platform right now there's a lot of 
politics and different perspectives on there that some people might not agree with but there's a lot of people like me that are uploading on there as well there's asmr content on there there's um educational math content on the content on there and stuff like that okay that's what bitshoot is it's just another video sharing platform meditation stream felix sounds cool will it be like a guided meditation or just a discussion it's going to be i'm going to show you one of the meditations that i used to do i want to get back into it so this is a great opportunity for me to get back into it and it's basically a standing tai chi meditation i'll show you guys how i end up doing it and then we'll see where it goes from there right open discussion makes sense it's good that there is an alternative would be good platform for political it's a phenomenal platform for political discussions i watch more videos on bit now than i do youtube because i consume a lot of politics and economics videos so that's where i go to to watch most of my politics economics videos now okay they're not on youtube because youtube's been killing a lot of channels okay gang i hope you have a fantastic next couple of days and i'll see you guys in a couple of days if you can make it we're doing meditation i think or on the weekend where we're going to do some comic book readings bye everyone